fancy a bit of head and neck anatomy today? Of course you do. Um, what have we been doing recently? My memory. We're going to go back to the face and we're going to look at the superficial arteries of the face. There are superficial arteries, there are deep arteries of the face, there are veins of the face. I thought, keep it sensible and we'll just look at the superficial arteries of the face. I was going to do the veins with it, I'm going to save that for another day, right? Got a couple of nice models that show the arteries on the face and they're a little bit different, which is good. You'll find out why later. Um, now, you know that the blood supply to the face is important um, because um, it's, it's, a, it's a part of body language, isn't it? We see other people's faces flush red with embarrassment or uh, when they get really hot, their faces go red and pink. So there's obviously a really rich blood supply to the face. And some people get like rosy cheeks when they get flushed and embarrassed and that sort of thing. Right? So in humans, the blood supply to the superficial face is important. Also, we're supplying blood to all of these muscles of facial expression and the muscles of mastication. So if any of that breaks down, then you're likely to get a bit of ischemia, a bit of pain in the face, headaches, that sort of thing. Um, in fact, this week, um, this is our first week back for this academic year. So we had a new intake of medicine students and of course they are meeting cadavers for the first time. So I was being a little bit careful with the students and keeping an eye on them, making sure they were okay because it is a very strange experience. Um, and I was keeping an eye on their faces because of course if the colour drains from their faces and they go very pale, then I need to, you know. And there are a few arteries supplying the blood to the superficial face and a few interesting things are going on in there. If we take the veins off, we'll do the, we'll do the veins another week because the veins are a little bit different and a little bit complicated around here. Um, but what we can see is, um, here is the... The arch of the aorta has three arteries coming from it. The brachiocephalic artery goes across to the right and then it has two branches going off to the left. I know you see one here, but don't... This is why you don't trust a single source of information, right? These models are beautiful, they're wonderful. Um, this is just you know, like a mould. There's two arteries here, not one. There's the common carotid artery coming off the artery of the aorta and then the left subclavian artery coming off the aorta, all right? So it's not one, it's two. Here's the common carotid artery ascending up into the neck and the common carotid artery divides into internal and external carotid arteries. Where does the internal carotid artery go? Into the skull. So it goes in there to supply blood to the brain. So the external carotid artery then stays external. So it's the external carotid artery that's responsible for supplying blood to the face. Here's a question. Is the external carotid artery the only blood vessel that supplies blood to the face? Of course, the fact that I've posed that question suggests that it probably isn't. <laughs> so, okay, here's a better question then. Which other artery is going to supply blood to the face if not the external carotid artery? Ooh, there's a tricky one. Right, so the external carotid artery sends up here and, and when you, you know when you palpate your pulse in the neck? You go really high. So look, we're almost, we're under the chin here, we're under the mandible. We're really high up. And the pulse that you can feel there is usually the pulse of the, of the external carotid artery. Now, the first branch of the external carotid artery is the facial artery, which we can see here. And it's a wiggly artery. It's wigging off, and so it's not the first branch. The first branch is the superior thyroid artery, but it's one of the branches. So the facial artery then is, is wiggling off under the mandible. So it's, um, it's actually going to go uh, deep to the submandibular gland and kind of deep to digastric and stylohyoid muscles. Um, we can see the submandibular gland on this side. We can't see it on this side because the submandibular gland has been taken away so that we can see the facial artery. Uh, and then when we're dissecting, when we take the skin off the face, usually the way we find the facial artery is because it has this very characteristic curl around the inferior border of the mandible and it's usually with the facial vein at this point. Um, and it wiggles up here now. You can see where it goes to. Can you see as it ascends? So you can imagine this on yourself, you know. It's about look, part way along the length of the mandible. 
the, uh, the facial artery becomes very superficial and passes over the, over the mandible and then it runs to the, the corner of the mouth. So just posterior to the corner of the mouth, the, uh, the facial artery runs and then where it's, where it's aimed at, it's aimed at the medial corner of the eye up here. That's, that's the route that it takes. And on its way, it gives off two branches to the lips, the superior and inferior labial branches. It gives off the lateral nasal artery here, so just on the lateral nose. And then it ends as the angular artery here. Now look, what we can see on this model is that it doesn't end or well, doesn't look like it ends because it joins with some other blood vessels here and we'll come back to those in a moment but essentially this is where the the um, the facial artery ends as the angular artery now what we're seeing here is a very common thing is that the many branches of the superficial arteries of the face anastomose with one another they link and often their terminal branches link up with one another uh, and the, the left and right sides link and cross over the midline as well so there are a lot of anastomoses here and of course this really rich blood supply means that um, a, a laceration to the face tends to bleed really really well and it's difficult to, you can it's difficult to block just by blocking you know by compressing an artery because you've got so many anastomoses um, the reason the facial artery is so wiggly around here is of course because of the many movements we make in the face. So a nice, you don't want to be stretching your arteries. Arteries aren't terribly stretchy. Veins are a little bit stretchier, but again, you don't really want to be stretching your veins too much. Um, so they're, they're tortuous, they're wriggly, so that they can react to the movements of the face. And yeah, like, like anyway, you get the idea. Um, now these two arteries here, right? These two arteries, these are the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries. I'm pretty sure we looked at the nerves when we were looking at the sensory nerves of the face, maybe? So can you, can you guess which is which? Trochlea, so if we're talking about trochlea, we're talking about the pulley in the eye. The pulley is for the superior oblique muscle and the pulley is in the medial orbit, right? So this artery is running superior to the trochlea, superior to the, the pulley of the superior oblique muscle. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, go and watch the video about the muscles of the orbit, the muscles that move the eye, the extraocular muscles. So this is the supratrochlear artery here. Uh, and then this one, this is the supraorbital artery. And in fact, these arteries are running with the nerves that we, we've described in the past. So what's happening here then is the angular artery, this final part of the facial artery, in this case, is anastomosing with the supratrochlear artery, which is lovely. I like that a lot. Um, so where do the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries come from then? They're not coming from the facial artery. Are they coming from the external carotid artery? Well, what we can see here is the external carotid artery continues up here and it ends here as the maxillary artery, which goes deep into the structures of the deep face and as this superficial temporal artery up here, which is the one you can see superficially on my temple, my temporal region. Um, now these blood vessels are coming out of the orbit. These arteries, they could get to the orbit actually, they could go through the inferior orbital fissure, but they don't. So these arteries are not coming from any of those branches, they're not coming from the external carotid artery. They're coming from the internal carotid artery. And that's because the internal carotid artery, um, if I pop this pipe cleaner through its canal, the internal carotid artery runs bloop, inside the cranial cavity here. And by doing that, it's running just posterior to the orbit, which means that the ophthalmic artery Check the spelling, it's got an OPH, phthalmic, off. Runs into the orbit, and that's the artery that's supplying blood to the, the muscles of the orbit. And as it runs through the orbit, it ends giving off the supratrochlear and supraorbital 
arteries. So in fact, the superficial blood supply to the face is also coming from the internal carotid artery for this, this region up here, which is cool, right? If we're still looking at the anterior face, we've covered all of these guys, but we've got this little one here. This is the mental artery, and it's appearing through the mental foramen. Um, so it's just supplying blood to the chin round here, right? Now the mental artery is a branch of the, um, of the maxillary artery. I've, I have got a model, a wonderful model, of the very deep arteries of the face. So we'll look at the deep arteries of the face another day. We can see the facial artery here. Uh, we can see the maxillary artery here. But suffice to say that branches from the maxillary artery are running down here and then popping out. So this is the inferior alveolar artery supplying blood to the teeth. And then it pops out through here. This branch is the mental artery supplying blood to the chin. All right. So this blood vessel then is coming from the external carotid artery through the maxillary artery and eventually appearing as the mental artery down here, okay? So that's the most of the face done. Now we're getting onto that last bit, that this blood vessel down here. As I said, the external carotid artery ends as the maxillary artery running to the deep face and this superficial temporal artery running up here. It also gives off this, po there's a posterior auricular artery. Remember the oracle relates to the ear, that's the oracle. So there's a posterior auricular artery running around posterior to the ear. But the superficial temporal artery then is running up here. So it's running up between the oracle and the temporomandibular joint. And it's running through the uh, parotid gland, which is going to supply blood to. And then it's going to run through the infratemporal fossa, which is this region here. This little, this little fossa there, little depression, infratemporal. This is the temporal region, it's inferior to the temporal region, so the infratemporal fossa. And then it's going to run up to the scalp. And it ends by giving off anterior and posterior um, branches. So the anterior branch, you can remember, because it's the, it's the frontal branch, it's going to the frontal bone. And of course, this, the bone here um, is, the, is the parietal bone, right? So it's giving off the parietal branch. Um, before it does that, it gives off, probably this, what this branch is alluding to here, it gives off, ah, it gives off a transverse facial artery. Here we go. You can see the veins and the arteries here together. So this then is the transverse facial artery. Do you see? It runs just a little, just like on the inferior part of the zygomatic arch, to run to this, this region of the face here. So it's another facial artery. It's running transversely, like a transverse section. Superficial temporal artery up here, giving off the parietal branch and the frontal branch. We've got the, the facial artery wiggling its way around here, giving off superior and inferior labial, labial arteries and running across to the corner of the eye as the angular artery, giving off the lateral nasal artery here. Um, and then we've got the, the mental artery, which isn't on this one, down here. So why do we care? Well, I think the obvious one is uh, trauma to the face um, and, um, you know, lacerations to the face has a, is a major artery likely to be involved. Now you know where they run. It's quite simple, I think, to remember how the facial artery runs and where all these pop out. Um, that's quite useful knowledge. Also, the fact that you have all these anastomoses is quite useful knowledge. Um, but the other one is um, giant cell arteritis or um, temporal arteritis, which is why this blood vessel is of particular interest. Now, this is a condition that occurs or a disease that occurs generally, most commonly in the head and neck. And the symptoms um, are, patients complain about often headaches, uh, pain when talking or chewing, um, sometimes blurred vision or diplopia, which is a worry. That should really flag this up to you. And 
maybe even uh, fever or flu-like symptoms and, and things like that. Now, this is more common in women than men, I think at a two to one ratio. It's more common or pretty much only occurs in those uh, over 50 or over 55, so the older population. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's strongly linked to polymyalgia rheumatica which is another interesting condition, which you might want to go and Google. Um, and it's caused by inflammation of the small arteries in the walls of the larger arteries, the arteries that we've been talking about. And the reason it's called giant cell arteritis, uh, itis is the inflammation, arter, arteries, arteritis is the inflammation of the arteries. The giant cell is the type of inflammatory cell that you see in these arteries that have been affected. Now, um, it tends to occur, as I said, mostly in the head and neck. It can occur also in the thorax. The reason it's a real worry is not just because of those symptoms, that, but um, it's the gold standard for... Um, Assessing it is a biopsy of one of these arteries. So the superficial temporal artery or its branches are a good target and then you can actually have a look at it histologically and see what's going on. But if that artery has been affected, that's not likely to be the only artery that's been affected. It's likely that many of these arteries have been affected. And we just talked about the ophthalmic artery. There's a risk that those arteries in the orbit have also been affected by this arteritis. And if this continues, it can lead to uh, impairment of vision and even loss of vision. Uh, the treatment is with steroids, just like polymyalgia rheumatica. So you tend to treat the patient based on their symptoms as soon as possible to lower the risk of, of loss of vision. Uh, yeah, so superficial blood superficial arteries of the face and bit of pathology. All right, it's not too bad. We'll have a look at the veins and the deep vessels. So if we look at the deep vessels, we get to look at, come back to this bad boy. And it, this is a little bit more abstract, so it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, there you go. All right. See you next week.